Hello, in the previous class, we have created this gallery from scratch and connected to our data source, just to understand how it works. Now we are going to see how to bring the exact columns we want from the data source using the this item property of the gallery. In order to do that, let's start from scratch, but not deleting this gallery, just start configuring all the elements, all the controls inside the gallery, so we can learn step by step how to do that. Here we have the layout, that's title, subtitle and, and body, just to understand how the layout works. Let's change to the blank layout. I'm going to click here on blank. Everything will disappear. It will be removed from inside the gallery. And we can see here in the left, in the tree view, that the gallery is empty. It's in here, it's not showing any data, it's still connected in the TB contact table as we did in the last class, but it's not showing any information because as we see, we don't have anything inside it. Not a label, not a text control, not an image, anything, because it's the blank layout. We just changed to this blank layout. Right, so in order to show the information, we need to, ins we need to start inserting controls inside the gallery. Make sure you click in the gallery and click on this pencil icon. Otherwise, it won't insert inside the correct place. Let's see an example of it not working. First, I'm going to select the gallery and then I'm going to insert a text label. As you can see, the text label was inserted outside the gallery. Now I'm going to delete, select the gallery, click on this pencil icon. It will select only the first item of the gallery, that's the template item. And now I'm going to insert the text label that will be inserted inside the gallery, as you can see here in the left. Now I can play with it, just change position or size or colors, and it will reflect for all the items inside the gallery, as we learned in the previous class. Before continuing, Let's just rename the gallery as a good practice. So instead of gallery one, I will call it gal contacts because it's a gallery for showing context information. Now let's take a look at our example that we are going to follow to continue our app. So here we have the contact name, email, phone, and also an image of the user. Right now we don't have the image yet. But we can put an icon here just to see how to insert an icon and keep in there while we don't have the image. So we have basically three labels, one for the name, one for the email, and one for the phone, and one icon that's the user icon. Let's go, let's go back to the app. And here let's show the username. Once I select the label, if I click on it, I'm seeing that it's showing the comments. It's showing here this item dot comments. And here is where we are going to change and understand better. There is this property called this item that if I delete everything and type inside the text property of the label, if I delete everything, we can see that it suggests a couple of different options here. All of them start with this item. So we have comment, department, email, name, and phone. And those are the columns from our data source, in our case, the Excel table. So we have all this information in there, and this is the information that's possible to show here inside the gallery. This item means the line of the gallery. So I will type here, this item, put the dot, this item put the dot and it will show the options I have to select. In this case, it's name. So once I put this item dot name, it will bring the information that's in the name column of our data source. This video is sponsored by the support of my subscribers who like and comment on the videos. This class is part of a full course I have on Udemy where I teach beginners how to build their first apps. So if you want to ensure lifetime access and see the entire course, I suggest you to join me on Udemy. 
If the course isn't for you, that's okay. But I kindly ask you to show your support by liking this video and subscribe to this channel. Your engagement means a lot to me and motivates me to continue creating valuable content like this. Now, let's get back to the class and continue learning together. And it will repeat for all of the lines in the gallery. So the first line has Rudimar as name, the second one has Clark Kent, the third one has Diana Prince, and so on. So it will go through all the lines that we will be showing inside the gallery and bring the name. Let's make it bolder, so I'm going to select this label and change to bold. I'm also going to rename this label that's right now called label2 and I will call LPL user name. This one already exists. I already created a label username in another screen. So let me just try a new name. LBL user name gal. Meaning that's the name that's inside the gallery. Right. Now let's create a new label and insert the email and also a new label and insert the phone. So I will select the gallery. Click on this icon, or I can select anything inside the gallery template. For example, if I select this label here, it will already insert uh, inside the, ga the gallery. It will already insert inside the gallery. So with the label selected, I'm going to go to insert and click on text label again. Now it will bring the text label. In my case, it has the thisitem.comment. And I'm going to change, and instead of comments, I will select this item dot email. It will bring the email of the user instead of the comment or other information that may be showing for you. Let's decrease the font size to 18. We can resize a little. And now let's bring a new label and also get the phone number. We can go again and insert a new label, or we can just copy this one. I'm going to click on this one, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and I will paste inside the gallery because this first one was selected. So once I paste, it will paste inside the gallery template. Now that I have it pasted with the correct font size I want, I will change the email to dot phone. Let me find the phone. Here it's showing the phone of the user. So now we have name, email, and phone. Let's also add the icon here for the user. So I'm going to click in the gallery. Here it also works. I didn't need to click, I didn't need to click in the icon. Once I clicked, it already selected the template. I can see the difference because if I had clicked here in the bottom, it would select the full gallery. But if I click in the template in the first icon, it already selects the correct place. Now I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to search for user. That will show this add user icon. Uh, actually, I want the other, it's person. So now it shows the person icon. It doesn't have that plus icon in the very bottom of the icon. So I'm going to click here and it will insert this icon inside the gallery. And once I insert it, it shows in all of the items of the gallery. Now let's decrease the template size. So I will click in the template, the first icon, and decrease the size. And also I will move everything up a little. I'm going to press Ctrl A. Once I'm inside the template with anything selected, I can press Ctrl A and it will select everything. Then I can move them up a little and everything will move up. So I can decrease a little more the template size. Here we can see that the things are not very well separated. They are not evenly separated. So we can select all of them, all the ones we want to separate evenly. So I'm going to select the first one, press shift the second, and then the third one, the three labels. I'm going to right click on it, and then I will go to align and distribute vertically. So we have a lot of options here for alignment. It's very useful. 
I use it a lot. In this case, let's di distribute vertically and it will distribute things vertically. In this case, it didn't work very well because they had different heights. So I'm going to just do uh, manually to make it a little better. This looks good like this. Let me just align the icon better. And we have our first version of the gallery showing all the contact information we need. We can also insert some icons here to put close of the email and the phone number, the email icon and the phone icon to make it easier for the user to visualize the information. So let's do this before we complete this class. I'm going to select the template and then I'm going to go to insert and search for phone, here's the phone icon, and also I'm going to insert again and search for email. No, it's mail, so here's the mail icon. I will just select both and resize them. Let's say the width will be 25 and the high 25. And now I'm going to position them close to the email and phone number. So let me just position here, decrease a little the width of the labels. Right here. And also we can... Here I can also align them again. So if I select both pressing shift, right click, we can align and align center and they will be perfect aligned. The label here uh, created two lines because the email didn't fit in the width of my label. And, but, but it doesn't look very good. There is one thing that we can do to avoid this multi-line for a label that's disable the wrap property of the label. With the label selected, I can go here and find the wrap property. Once I click on it, it's true. I can just change to false and then it won't let break into lines, but put these three dots in the ends, showing that it has more information than the information that's displaying here. Now let's just align these labels again. So I will select both, right click, align and align left and they will be perfect aligned. Let me just resize this one a little bit so have the same width of the label in the top. And now finally, we have our first version of the gallery. In the next class, we are going to see another very important property of the gallery. That's the one that tells which item is selected. That will be very important in the future. See you in the next class.